Well, hi guys, welcome back to Linda's Pantry. And today we are gonna chit chat about the All-American Canner. I told you guys that I was gonna do a little bit of a series on this and I wanna get started. We answered a few questions and I will be doing another video answering some more questions because I'm sure you'll have them. Go ahead and leave some of those questions in this video and I'll address it in my next video in this series. So, I can't answer hundreds of questions in one video or it would take, you know, a couple hours. But I can answer the ones that stand out to me and that get repeated throughout the comment section. So, okay, the All-American Canner. This is, to me, the Cadillac. Now, I've had Prestos in the past. In fact, that's what I started canning with as an adult. Um, and they're very, you know, they're reasonable. They're, uh, they're workhorses. I have nothing against them at all and they're a little bit lighter weight. This is a die cast aluminum and they're heavy but these are also a workhorse. There's only a couple of things on here that you would ever need to replace if you needed to. So um, you, there's no rubber gasket on here. This is a metal to metal seal and a lot of people ask uh, you know how you do um, how you lubricate it and I store it with my lid in like this so I protect my pressure gauge so it's a thin and we're talking like lip gloss thin layer around this edge here and around the slanted edge of the canner here to get that metal to metal seal I don't do it every canning session I do wash my canners with every canning session but I do not do that seal so what you want to look for when you get your canner out is this petcock, which is what vents the steam out. You want to make sure that that is clear because it, if it can't vent steam in the venting process or to release pressure with the weight on it, then you've got a problem. It's going to build up too much pressure. I've never ever had mine full. And then you also, you've got the pressure gauge. You can get these calibrated every year if you'd like. Mine has stayed pretty true to a fact because not only do I have this, but I also, it comes with a weight, a weighted. So this is, this is what goes on that um, pet cup. And for my altitude, it's 10 pounds. When it starts, pressure builds up, it's gonna release a little bit of steam out from underneath that and push it and it's gonna make a, a jiggling ch -ch -ch noise. So, and then on the inside, <clears throat> and I store mine with a paper towel down in the bottom to keep absorb any moisture that might get in there when I'm not using it. This is the rack that keeps your jars up above the bottom of the canner. And it's about a quarter of an inch, and really that's all you need. You never want them down directly inside the canner and then we have i apologize for the dishwasher going oh and these stickers some people don't like them on there i i actually do like it on there um you can get them replaced if for some reason you got a little overzealous with cleaning and your stickers came off it's a warning sticker it, it you would be able to get them replaced from all american you can get any of these items too. And if you lost your weight, if you lost this, the pet cock, any of that can be replaced. There's even a back here, just like with the Presto, this is a rubber gasket. And it, if you, let's say the pet cock did clog and you've got too much pressure, pressure built up in this, this would blow out of there. And everything in your canner would be pretty much on your ceiling <laughs> your jars would break I mean it would just be a big mess now I've had mine let's see I got my big all-american canner um, first and then this one second this is my favorite actually um, so when you're putting this on, a lot of people worry about this being level all the way around. And that is not, you do not have to worry about that. If you pull these thumb screws up opposite of each other and just kind of get them in place lightly, they will work themselves out. It will bring the lid in, um, 
and even it out on its own. I also was asked in one of the videos, so I'm kind of answering some of the questions as I go along, um, if in fact your lid got stuck, what would you use to get it unstuck? And I had never had the uh, 921 get stuck, but this one, the first, oh, I don't know, five or six times I used this can or seemed like every time it would get stuck. And so I had to research how to remedy that that problem and it's pretty simple you take a claw hammer and let's see if i can grab one really quick yep. and once you your canners come down off of pressure you've um you know released taken the weight off let it sit and you've loosened the sun the thumb screws and all that but your canner is stuck this is what you're going to do let's take this these back off. You can replace these two if for some reason you damaged one or you know you um, I don't know what might happen to them. But let's say let's pretend that this is stuck. It's literally this easy. You're just going to take and take your the claw of the hammer and go right underneath that and it will pop that seal and you be fine. So you'll, you'll twist if you can. You'll twist and then pop that seal open. That's how I had to get this open. It didn't hurt my canner one bit. Now, the amount of water is the same for this one as it is for the larger All-American. You need three inches of water in here. And you never want to run a canner dry, whether it be a Presto or an All-American or any other pressure canner. If you run the canner dry, you take a chance of warping it and um, your canner is no good so you don't you don't ever want to do that so always always put the correct amount of water in there and these do um, because it's aluminum they can get a little bit of the um, <sighs> oxidation sorry I had to sneeze there um, it can look like it's oxidized a little bit even on the outside sometimes or on the inside of the canner itself. Um, but it doesn't hurt the, uh, the effect or change in any way how it works. Do I use this for cooking? No, I would use this strictly for canning, whether it be water bath canning and don't seal the lid down or pressure canning. So that's really all there is to this. Now, if you guys would like to research maybe owning a smaller one, because for smaller batch canning, this is my go-to. Seven, four quarts or seven pints at a time is perfect for me, and then I can rotate through my stuff. Now, if I feel like I've got a huge bargain on some item, or there's just tons of stuff coming in from the garden, then I can get both canners out um, and do it all at the same time. But for the most part, this is the one I use because it's easy to bring in, it's, it's easy to manage everything, and I don't feel like I'm overdoing what I should be doing for myself and be able to rotate my food storage. So that being said, if you have any questions, let me know. You can, if you lost your insert, you could order a new one. Uh, quite often if I'm water bath canning and I don't have something to put on the bottom of the stock pot that I happen to be using if I don't want to get the big water bath canner out. I will just use jar rings or a washcloth, um, a dishcloth down at the bottom to give it a little buffer and it works just fine. So that's my spiel. It's pretty, pretty easy to um, store. It's easy to uh, get in a cabinet it's easy to get on and off the stove even when it's full although i never move my canner once i have it full of jars um, the jars will come out and then i'll move my canner after it's nice and cool they do get extremely hot but that's so we kill any and all chances of botulism and any other bacteria is gone and the jars seal and become shelf stable so if you have any questions, you want to know anything else about the All-American, um, let me know. Somebody did ask what my favorite canner was, and I'm going to tell you it's this one right here. So, uh, yeah, she's a workhorse. And um, the big one it is so handy in a pinch. You can use these on an open flame. 
I wouldn't recommend you can on a glass top because the bottom doesn't have the it doesn't have that curvature that a Presto has. Prestos can be used on top of a glass top or ceramic top stove if the manufacturer of the stove says it's okay. These are not designed for those and they're heavier so the weight is involved as well. But you can put them out like on a um, barbecue burner or a burner that is less, you know, I think uh, for Prestos it's 12,000 BTUs. So these can tolerate a little bit higher temps but um, I would, I would only, I wouldn't use it on a turkey cooker. I would use it like on a camp chef or something like that where you can actually bring the flame down a little bit or divert, you know, put a trivet between the, two, the burner and the canning pot. So you don't have to keep adjusting too uh, drastically to keep your temperatures good and solid. So if that makes sense, guys, if you like this video, I hope you give me a thumbs up and I look forward to answering some more questions. I'm also gonna be doing a little bit of a demonstration for you so we walk through the whole process of how this counter works, what to listen for, what to look for when sealing it up and in great detail. All right, I'll see you next time. Something delicious coming out of this baby. <laughs>